They told us the internet was written in stone. They lied. The internet is written in sand and the tide is coming in. I recently found out that 25% of all web pages created in the last 10 years had completely vanished. I honestly used to think that once something was uploaded, it was the eternal record for human history. But the more I dig into the architecture, the more I realize we are living in the age of digital amnesia. But here's the scary part. Because we store everything on centralized servers, history isn't fixed, it's fluid. If a newspaper wanted to change the narrative from a war from five years ago, they wouldn't have to burn any books. They would just log in, hit backspace, and retype the headline. The old truth didn't just die. To a new viewer, it effectively never existed. We think of the cloud as a library, but it's really just a whiteboard. And whoever owns the server holds the eraser. This is why I don't look at the internet computer as just a crypto project anymore. The label is too small. We obsess over transactions per second. We obsess over speed. But in a world that is constantly erasing history, the only metric that actually matters is centuries per byte. Not how fast the data moves, but how long it survives. We need to stop looking at this protocol as just a world computer and start looking at it as a civilization arc. I want to share a capability of this architecture nobody talks about. We're effectively taking that sand and fusing it into a digital time crystal, a structure that locks information in place forever. But you can't build a time machine using old parts. To achieve true permanence, the internet computer had to violate the standard rules of IT. It relies on three fundamental laws. Law number one is the living memory. Think about your laptop. When you turn it off, the RAM gets wiped. You have to save your work to the hard drive or you lose it. Well, on ICP, the software is different. It's alive. It uses something called orthogonal persistence. Basically, the canister is the RAM, but it never wipes. It doesn't need a database. It just exists in a permanent state. It's like a digital brain that never sleeps. Now you might be asking, why can't we use Ethereum or Solana for this? The answer isn't about speed, it's about the pointer problem. See, other blockchains are just ledgers. They don't actually store the picture, the website, or the history. They just store the link that points to the server where the file lives. They give you the receipt for the gold. They don't give you the gold. If that external server stops paying its bill, the link breaks and the receipt becomes worthless. This is why NFTs disappear. The internet computer is the only protocol that solves this. It doesn't give you a receipt. It puts the actual file, the actual website, the actual history inside the block. There is no external server. There is no pointer. The asset and the ledger are fused. That is the only way to guarantee the data survives a century. But once you own the data, how do you trust the code that actually runs it? Law number two is the black hole. This part exposes a lie in the crypto industry. We love to say code is law, but have you ever noticed how many DeFi protocols get hacked or rug pulled by their own developers? That's because most dApps still have admin keys. The developer can pause the contract upgrade it or change the rules whenever they want. That isn't law. That's just a dictatorship with a website. The black hole solves this. A developer can upload the truth like a contract, a manifesto, or a history book, and then assign the black hole as the controller. Instantly, the admin keys are destroyed, the code becomes immutable, not even the guy who built it can change it. It transforms software which is fluid into a monument which is solid. This is the only way to have true trust. Law number three is the time lock. It sounds sci-fi, but it's real. It's called the VETS keys. Usually, encryptions protect you from hackers stealing your data. VET keys protects you from time. We can now create a time capsule. You can lock a secret inside a canister and program it so that the decryption key literally doesn't exist until 2050. 
No government, no subpoena, no supercomputer can force it open early. The blockchain itself is the clock. Think about the power of this for a journalist or a whistleblower. You could upload evidence of corruption today, set it to the crypt in 10 years, and walk away. You've created a dead man switch that is guaranteed by the law of physics. But the ultimate customer for this archive isn't just us, it's AI. At least for now, we are not training GPT-5 on the blockchain. The compute constraints are too high. But while the engine might live in a data center, the textbook it learns from needs to live here. Consider this, AI models learn by reading the internet. If the internet is being stealth edited, then the AI is being gaslit. It learns the new truth and it forgets the old one. If we train the next generation of AI on a history that has been erased, we are building a hallucination machine. By archiving the web on the internet computer, we are creating an immutable training layer for artificial intelligence. We are ensuring that the gods of the future are learning from the truth, not the narrative. And that's the big realization for me. Bitcoin proof we can have money that no one can print. The internet computer is proving we can have a history that no one can burn. In a world full of deep fakes and liquid reality, the most valuable asset isn't going to be a token. It's going to be the archive. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, stay blessed.